Hi everyone, we'll be getting started. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for taking time to join us today. Today's speakers include Andy Meyer, Senior Director of Professional Services from Gotham, Dyrell White, Senior Sales Engineer from Arctic Wolf, and Adib Saraki, Senior Sales Engineer from Mimecast. If you have questions throughout the webinar, please put them in the Q&A box on the right side of your screen. The panelists will address them all at the end. During the webinar, we will be asking questions. Please answer them in the chat box for a chance to win a $100 Amazon gift card. The attendee with the most correct answers will be the winner. We will announce this at the end of the webinar. Again, thank you for joining us, and I will now turn it over to Andy Meyer. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, notice we've got a little last minute action here. The three presenters decided to go full on company swag. So we're in our polos and we're in our hats. We're ready to deliver a good message to you today. So if you could uh, hit the next slide there, Dural, we'll go through the agenda for today. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about Gotham, who we are, and a lot of you know us, looking at the attendee list here on the screen. So thanks for joining us. Hope all my friends are doing well. Uh, we're gonna go through some questions and whatnot, and then we're gonna talk about you know best practices, really, the heart of the matter. Talking about ransomware, it's much more prevalent these days. Attacks, uh, threat vectors are really opening up wide with more work from home styles, more you know, uncontrolled devices, things like that, messaging, scams. Uh, we're gonna, a lot of good stories to tell. Go through um, you know, how to look, find those, how to remediate after the fact, and how to really just get out in front of it, right? Designing the right defense system, and then how to manage that over time to proactively scan and keep up the, the, the gates and uh, make sure nothing's getting through. A lot of that, of course, starts with employee behavior and what they're gonna do, so we, we have some suggestions around training. And then, like Shaylin said, as we pop those questions, we're gonna wait 15 seconds for everyone to answer, and then we're gonna take the best answer closest to the mark, not Price is Right style, you know, you can go over before, before, but whoever's closest to the, to the right number is what'll win. So uh, we have a good prize at the end of that. Next slide, please. So just in terms of Gotham, in case you don't know us, right, we've been around for about uh, 18 years now. I've been there for 15 of those 18 years, and it's been a great ride. We're about 120 employees. Uh, if you could just pop on back real quick. Um, anyway, we're, uh, you know, privately held company. We're a super regional bar in the Northeast. Uh, but have very large customers, um, very good financial shape, and uh, very, very busy uh, in these times. So the pillars that we really subscribe to uh, are around cybersecurity, which is what we're here to talk about today. You can hit the next slide, Darrell. Um, we're talking about security and a lot of our, whether it's a professional services offering or it's a managed services offering, uh, tons of smart folks on staff. Uh, a lot of you have been acquiring products from us over the years. Um, and then uh, moving into cloud technologies, right? We're working with all the major providers, as well as a lot of the end user computing solutions that are out there. Um, and then uh, doing our data center work, talking about some of the different things. You've got timings on your presentation there. Do yeah, I I want to take yeah. Those? sorry about that. I'm gonna pop out and, and do that and probably fix it for the, uh, for the screen. Sure. Uh, I can talk about this from memory if you just want to stop the presentation there. Okay. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, so when we talk about next gen data center, we're talking about the different things that we provide uh, in that space, whether it's uh, storage solutions or compute, or you know moving you towards hybrid cloud technologies, you know integrating your data center with public cloud technologies. The last area is collaboration, where we talk about uh, that's our Microsoft practice. There, we're talking about uh, Office 365 and and different exchange elements, um, and then moving into more. Uh, SharePoint solutions um, and really the whole kind of Microsoft Teams collaboration suite there. Um, one of the offerings that we provide to our customers is SOC as a service. 
Uh, it's powered by Arctic Wolf, right? They've been a great partner of ours for a long time. What we do is basically combine their threat intelligence and their uh, concierge engineers along with our um, along with our uh, technical folks in our NOC, and we provide remediation services. So when an alert is generated and you've got a threat or something that needs to be investigated and you potentially don't have the staff to do that, uh, our smoke folks, smart folks will dial in, you know, get right on it and, and work with you to remediate those, those actions. So uh, that might make a little more sense as you go through the platform and understand what it is uh, that Arctic Wolf provides um, and then, you know, what Gotham can layer in on top of that. So with giveaways, right? We're gonna have a lot of questions. Type your answers in the chat window. First person with the correct closest to the mark wins. Uh, and then we're gonna accumulate points. Last question is for a tiebreaker if somebody, uh, if everyone got the first four questions or if there's any ties there. So rules are in place. I think that's all for me. And I'm gonna hand it over to Durrell there to take us to the next layer. Awesome, thank you, Andy. And uh, sorry about that folks, didn't realize the timer was on those slides, but We'll talk about the first uh, best practice here, which is really to implement a ransomware solution. And I'll have Adib kind of introduce the, uh, the questions for each of our topics here. So with that, Adib. Excellent. So the first question, what is the percent of growth for ransomware infection year over year? So let's see, maybe we should give them some hints. So it's definitely a percent. Uh, mm -hmm you think greater than 100 percent lower than 100 percent let's say greater. greater i think it's greater it's a three digit number yeah all right five four three <laughs> two one all right all right guys so what we're actually seeing is that uh ransomware percent growth year over year is actually 165 percent so Congrats to those who got that correct. Um, but that's almost shocking, but it's really just the, the, the life that we're living in now. Um, you know, as we look through the other cybersecurity challenges on this slide, you'll also notice that we're seeing things like a rise of bots. So, you know, 50 billion devices that can gain access to your data. Uh, the cloud in industry is rapidly expanding, but security for whatever reason is always an afterthought, which is crazy considering, you know, there's 4.6 billion plus users out there in the cloud. Um, you know, if we're talking about mobile malware, we're seeing 20 million bad applications that can threaten your mobile device. And then you got hacktivism, where we're seeing folks leaking confidential information or uh, unleashing denial of service attacks. Uh, one of the things that Mimecast has recently done, just trying to make sure that we're keeping up to date with everything going on in the world, is we did a report. We pulled all of our threat intelligence for all 39,000 customers around the world. And for 100 days, we looked at those metrics. So essentially what you're seeing from January to March of 2020, we saw an increase of spam and opportunistic detections, you know, 26.3%, nothing to be shy about. That's, that's a decent sized number right there. Uh, the other numbers, on the other hand, you know, impersonation, 30%. So you think BEC, think uh, C-level impersonation, wire transfer requests, phishing and whatnot. Malware, on the other hand, just in the last 100 days, you're seeing 35.16% increase. Uh, a lot of different malware is being shot out there just to go ahead and take advantage of businesses that are really adopting that work from home mentality. Uh, URLs clocked in at the highest percentage. A lot of credential harvesting, a lot of malicious URLs are being sent, 55.8%. Uh, that's a number that troubles a lot of organizations out there. And that's just what we saw in only 100 days we're still not out of it yet. Things are still happening. If you were to put all those together, the overall average detection of what we're seeing, 33%. Next slide. Now, with COVID in mind, you know we are seeing a lot of emerging threats, specifically phishing attacks that are happening out there. So these are a few phishing examples of impersonation of a government agency that I just wanted to kind of highlight here. Um, you know, I think these are good examples for employees and staff to understand what they're going to be facing in, in this kind of new world that we're in right now. Um, the first phishing example we have here is actually about hackers trying to, you know, elicit donations via Bitcoin to help create a vaccine. So basically those bad actors are, are trying to pull at the heartstrings of 
you know, the different kind-hearted folks out there to try to get them to do something for good. Um, the second phishing example, which was actually identified by Mindcast, uh, included like a do-it-yourself coronavirus at home testing kit. So it basically, as soon as you go onto their website, you put in your credit card information, sure enough, the transaction wasn't legit. Um, if you're handing over your credit card to the bad actors. So, you know, I think the lesson here is that if you can communicate and then help your employees understand that if it's too good to be true, it's probably false. Um, or if you want to understand what it really is, just do a quick search, right? Find it on your own. Don't allow emails to be away from those bad actors to actually walk through your pearly gates. Awesome. Uh, a lot of people are wondering, all right, what's this Kali Linux thing? What's this dragon? Uh, the quieter you are, the more you're able to hear. Uh, what we wanted to do for you is something special today. We are doing a live hack. Uh, again, I'm not hacking anybody in specific. Uh, I'd probably lose my job pretty quickly if we did that. Uh, but we did was we put together a video of me actually performing this. So this way you can see what it looks like. And I'll narrate in the back end. Darrell, next slide. All right. Uh, what I've done is I've logged into a remote machine. Uh, this particular machine itself, we have a victim as well as a hacker machine. What I've done here is I've pulled up a exploit framework. It's very famous out there. Anybody that's a penetration tester, it's called a Metasploit. What Metasploit does is it really puts together a giant collection of different exploits that can be used and executed uh, if you have a little bit of knowledge, right? Now, let's say I'm not maybe necessarily a hacker, but I want to go ahead and kick one of these off. There's a software out there called Armitage. What Armitage has done, as you see on your screen, it's taken the full framework of Metasploit and given me uh, a wrapper, a GUI, if you will, so I can go ahead and kick these off easily. Uh, one of the things I've done is I've created a fake pay statement email, which you're seeing here on your screen, and I'm pretending to be HR, and I'm going to send it to one of my employees. All I need them to do is click one of those blue links. What we've seen a lot of is cousin domains, typo squatting, homoglyph attacks, basically swapping out characters to make it look like it. Now you'll see that I right there, you can make a capital I and a lowercase l look identical and a lot of end users wouldn't know the difference. What I've done is I've created that and I've also went ahead and I've set it to port 80 being the most common port that's listened to when it comes to networking. Uh, what we're gonna do from this point is we're gonna go ahead and now launch this attack so this way you can see what it looks like in the back end. Now, once this attack is launched, you're gonna see a server that is now started in the back end. This particular server itself is gonna be our listener, if you will. Uh, what I've done is I've already had this email put together. We're gonna go ahead and send this off. It's gonna to go to uh, a user that's at the company as well as a user that's protected by Mimecast. So we'll go ahead and we'll click the send button. Keep an eye on this. That message is now on its way over to the users. You can see here, the user already has it in their mailbox. Now, I added it in here twice. What I'm doing is I'm doubling down on my chances to go ahead and get somebody to click on it. And when you're talking about people's paychecks, they listen. So if you're looking at it, you're reading through it, all it's saying is this is your pay stub. If you want to view it, click on this link. If you're on your phone, go ahead and click on this link. It looks like it's from HR. A lot of people may not know the difference on something like this. Again, really what it comes down to is the fact that hackers are doing this not just with pay stubs, they're doing it with direct deposit changes, they're doing it to say, hey, we need you to go ahead and sign up for a specific product or a certain program, uh, whatever it may be at that point. Uh, then usually what happens is they end up putting all of the training that they have or even their gut feelings on the inside, they put that to the side. They don't even think about it at that point. What they're really thinking about is, hey, I need to be able to see my pay stuff. I need to be able to go ahead and get that info. I need to be able to get this free COVID-19 testing kit. Maybe uh, my company's trying to go ahead and give me some sort of uh, COVID relief fund. They'll take advantage of that. And you'll see here, but if I click on this, uh, you'll notice that the link A looks just normal and then boom, it does a drive-by download almost automatically and very quickly will that user now have clicked on that and downloaded it to their machine. Upon doing that, they gave me full host access to their machine itself. So if it's a laptop or a desktop, it does not matter. Some of the things that I can do is I can browse your files. I can show what processes you're on. I can even go ahead and log the different keystrokes that that user is typing. Now, this is for banking. This is for 
things maybe that I shouldn't have my eyes on. This is maybe for you know situations where the individual that I'm attacking has the keys to a lot of doors. But usually where people listen the most is when I start taking screenshots of their actual desktop. Another thing that you can do on this, which is kind of creepy, you can even do webcam shots of whoever you're talking to, whoever you're communicating with on the back end, and they won't even know it. The green light next to your laptop will not pop on. You won't know that they're taking a screenshot. You won't know that they're looking at the keys that you've actually went ahead and typed, and they don't know that they're, you're looking at their files. Now, that being said, that's why these situations are very important to go ahead and address. I think you can go ahead and go to the next slide. Awesome, indeed. Now, the next uh, cybersecurity practice is being able to improve, you know, the ability to identify and remediate cyber attacks. So we want you guys to be like Tom Cruise here in Minority Report, you know, be able to identify and remediate. Now, with that, we'll have our uh, pop quiz question here. Awesome. Uh, the question is this. What is the average time to identify and remediate cyber attacks? So what are we thinking here, guys? A couple of days, months, years? I know it's got to be more than months. I know it's got to be more We're talking than from days, insertion all the way to identification and then remediation after that. And we all know that sometimes they can live in there for a long, long time, right, before you're even aware. So I think it's going to be a big number, too. I think it's a big number. What do you guys think? I, I agree. <laughs> Okay. Pop those answers in the chat. Let's see. Answer the question in the chat box, whichever. Let's go five, four, three, two, one. Boom. So, on average, it takes 314 days to identify and contain the attack. So, congrats to those who got that answer. Uh, but I just want you guys to put this into perspective, right? If you think about it for a second, do you know how much we can possibly do as an attacker within 314 days or even 230 days, right? Just put it into, into perspective here. That's a date on Valentine's Day, uh, a 4th of July barbecue, and a Thanksgiving dinner. So if you think about all the things that happen in between those holidays, an attacker could be kind of performing some, some low, slow attack, uh, potentially breaching into your network. So think about how much data might've been stolen, accounts might've been compromised, vulnerabilities exposed within that entire prime, uh, time frame. Uh, what we want to talk about now is the remediation portion. One of the things that Mimecast believes in very strongly is that if a message is being sent out or even internally to another user, uh, we need to have some sort of ability to look at that traffic as well. We don't just want to look at things that are coming inbound. What Mimecast has done is we've created a journaled feed of your internal messages, and we're also looking at your outbound emails, right? So in this case, when we see a message go from east to west, from one user to another, Mimecast is doing the same security scans that traditional solutions out there just do on an inbound standpoint. We're looking at attachments. We're doing full inspection and sandboxing. We're looking at URLs, making sure they're not malicious, and in conjunction with that, we're also looking at the content to make sure that nothing sensitive or dangerous is being sent either outbound or to another user. Uh, this usually happens from a compromised insider or somebody that watched uh, too much Mr. Robot and they wanna go ahead and try their hand at the thing I was showing earlier. Uh, we'll go ahead and then we'll justify if we actually think this attachment is good, if this URL is bad, if the content itself is safe, we'll make that decision. If for whatever shape or form we feel that it's against policy or bad, then we do a full remediation of that message and take it directly out of the mailbox and make it invisible in the archive. So this way a user can't compromise their own machine or really spread the infection to other users and make sure the administrative team is fully alerted in real time as it's happening. Next slide. Awesome, Adib. Now the next one is gonna be designing an actual defense system. And with that, we'll have our third question here. Awesome. What is the first stage in designing your cyber defense? I think this one is a little bit tougher. This one's a little bit tougher. Um, you may that's have okay. heard of uh, you may have heard of the framework that you know anybody that's in the IT world. You may have heard of the framework that we're trying to follow here, uh, without giving it away too much. Uh, but yeah, what is the first stage? What's the first thing you should do when you're trying to create your cyber defense? 
It's a four letter word, but you know, it's an acronym. Acronym, yeah. Mm hmm. Hmm. What could it be? First stage of that standard? Is that what we're talking about? Okay. I think so. Yeah. Maybe. <clears throat> first stage in designing your cyber defense. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Boom. First step is to simply understand and keyword here, identify what you have in your environment, right? So just know what assets you have out there, especially your business critical assets. Uh, building a security defense really starts with flowing or following like a, a, a NIST framework, right, as an example. So you, you really wanna have a concrete inventory of all your assets. Just again, know what's out there. And once you do know what's out there, that helps to um, design the concept of what you wanna really protect out there. Um, then if anything slips past your detection capabilities, you can actually find a way to respond and recover from that. But at the end of the day, you know, you want to be able to effectively uh, remediate and improve. So if you're not sure where to actually begin, just follow the framework, NIST being a, a very popular one out there, um, you'll always find that identify is going to be that first step. Now, here, just as another example, you've got like the Center for Internet Security or your CIS Top uh, 20 Controls. Uh, which actually complements the NIST framework. And it's a good way to understand, like, how do I implement uh, security controls to make my business more secure? Um, so you, so you see, like, the, the controls fall into three different categories. So on the left side, you've got basic. In the middle there, you've got foundational. On the right side, you've got organizational. Um, you know, the controls listed under basic, they really talk about things like understanding your software, hardware assets, uh, vulnerability scanning, and then you'll see the controls all the way to the right talk more about things like pen test and, and red team exercises. Uh, but these days, we want, we're seeing a lot of companies allocate security budget to that foundational, so that the middle part there. So things like deploying EDR solutions, email security, um, like Mindcast, backup solutions, et cetera. Um, you know, I personally have talked to a lot of customers that kind of go down that organizational process, so all the steps there on the right. Um, and they kind of think like, hey, I need to get a pen test done in my environment, which isn't a bad idea, but that'll eventually tell you that you're not even following the basic controls. That you're not really understanding uh, what hardware or software you have out there. So again, you know, everything falls under that identify stage. And then guess what? You know, when you look at that first few uh, stages within the basic controls, these map directly to that identify stage, just like we mentioned in the previous slide. So again, identify is the most important, I'd say, uh, and a key part of that foundation of your cybersecurity defense. Uh, the part that you're seeing right here, this graphic itself is a kind of a behind the scenes view of what Mimecast does when an email is on its way into your environment, right? Uh, one of the first things that we do is that we do a layered approach, right? We're looking directly to see, hey, is it something that's on a block list? If it passes DNS authentication, basic reputation and spam scanning, content examination, DLP, impersonation, and then on the outside funnels, you'll see attachment and URL inspection. The reason why we separate these out in funnels is because Mindcast knows that not only is safety a priority to the customers and people out there that we're trying to protect, but I also want speed and efficacy. By putting this in a layered approach, we always believe that layered is better, defense in depth, if you will, we can now utilize less processor heavy scans up at the top where we can identify early on and we may not need to leverage the more processor heavy processes like impersonation and sandboxing or even real-time url analysis uh, the big thing to take away from this is the actual security functionality in the back end is one thing but also making sure that users are educated is just as important next slide so the next step here is proactively scan your defenses Right, you really want to understand, you know, where do we have any holes in our wall, so to speak. And with that, we'll have our next question. Next question is, how do you know if a threat has breached your defenses? Well, these questions are getting good. harder. It's a good one. How do you know? I mean, how do you know? You mean like when does it first become apparent, or is it? When the user calls or hmm. 
That's I don't know, if I'm running a business and something happened where my defenses were breached, how would I actually know about that? Mm -hmm. When somebody takes out a Ferrari in your name, that's how you know. <laughs> well, is there a right answer to this? I guess it's it's best answer would be there. And that's uh, five, four, three, two, one. All right. So there's an evolution of what the bad guys are actually doing out there, and it can be easy for them to slip through your defenses. So the answer here is that, you know, these days when a threat breaches your defenses, you should be getting a notification of some sort from a product or a human, right? But the most effective defenses include the product and the human elements, right? We're, we're looking at both. So if you remember a few years back, we had the, uh, the target breach. Um, just kind of a quick story. They actually fell victim to a sophisticated attack, but they had like an advanced threat protection tool to, to detect it. You know, it threw an alert, but no one actually responded. So the product was there, but I think the human element, there were some, some gaps there. So in order to effectively scan your defenses, you need to have, I'd say two key components, right? You need to have one dedicated security team. So I think, you know, Gartner recommends having a team of like eight, 12 people to manage a SIM. Um, you need a team that'll help manage that technology, keep their eyes on the, your different attack surfaces. And then the second element uh, would be having that technology. So the technology is important uh, because it makes it easier for your security team to, to do that triage, do the investigation of potential incidents and vulnerabilities, uh, whether it be on-prem, on the employee's laptop, in the cloud, you need to be able to monitor those resources simultaneously and around the clock. Now, with over 3,000 security vendors out there, and, and trust me, I've worked for a couple, that that list is only gonna expand, it's just not enough to collect logs and have them send you logs and then review each of those logs independently. Uh, you really need to be able to take those logs, enrich those logs, turn them into actionable, actionable intelligence, and you know, if you wanna know what that process looks like, well, first you need to be able to ingest and aggregate that data, right? Many companies are looking for like SIM technologies or even having like a managed uh, SIM approach. Next, you need to be able to parse that data. So what does that mean? With so much information in the ocean, you really wanna know how do we boil it down to find, you know, those indicators that really matter. Um, I don't know if you've ever done this, but if you've ever gone through DNS logs, for example, you'll know that there's so much information in those DNS logs that it's very hard to actually put the relevant pieces together uh, to really understand the potential breach. And then lastly, you know, analyze and correlate that data. I think that's the most effective way to understand, you know, why a breach occurred. Plus, it allows you to, to put the pieces together, right? You know, cybersecurity is difficult. We want someone to paint the picture for us. You need something to be able to analyze and correlate all that data and paint that picture for you. Now, on top of making the most of those logs, we want you know you guys to be able to proactively scan your environment. So if you remember just kind of another story here, we had the Equifax breach. Um, they had an internet facing server that needed to be patched. You know, any vulnerability tool probably would have been able to tell them like they needed that patch but it wasn't a high priority on their list. So they just never deployed that patch. Um, and funny thing is that patch was available for two months already. So to start with scanning, uh, you know, start scanning your, your perimeter, look for unfamiliar domains, verify that the, the firewall is configured, um, scan inside your environment, right? We talked about understanding, you know, what you, uh, what you have, but it's, it's important to know maybe what shouldn't be there, right? What devices were connected that should not be connected. And then lastly, you know, scan your endpoints, check for missing patches, uh, know what malicious applications are running on your endpoints, on your machines, your laptops, et cetera. Now, next topic here, uh, and this is, I think is a, a very important uh, best practice is to actually train your employees to prevent data leaks. Because if you take a look at some of the statistics out there, a lot of the breaches that occurred were a result of human error. Um, so it's important to train your employees. And with that, We'll uh, ask the question here. All right. What is the percentage of threats and data leaks that start with an employee? That's a good one too. I think uh, you'd be surprised with the number. Well, that's not some big number. That's gotta be a hundred or less, right? 
So let's throw some numbers in there, people. See what we can come up with. It's probably a pretty big percentage. So the total leaks that happen. If my dad there? works there, it goes up 50%. <laughs> Yeah, I can think of a few coworkers that might uh, increase this percent here. Last chance, correct percentage in five, four, three, two, one. Boom. So, Whoa. as you can see here, uh, the number is, is kind of shocking. Uh, sit back and, and soak it in. That's, that's quite a, a decent amount. Uh, you're looking at 86% of threats and data leaks start with an employee. That number is huge. So one of the biggest things that, that we're seeing is that whether it's a compromised internal user or maybe somebody that doesn't even know the difference, uh, they don't even know that they've been compromised or just a, a careless employee, if you will, that's when stuff happens. Maybe they didn't know that it was safe. They didn't know if it was dangerous. They didn't know if it was sensitive. The moral of the story is this, everybody that's internal has a job to do. To make sure that that data doesn't fall in the hands of somebody else is just as important you know, as making sure the stuff doesn't come in in the first place, right? So what we need to do is make sure that, you know, for example, if you find a fob, do not use it, it's not safe. Uh, do not click on this website if you don't know who it's from. Uh, the list is, is long and wide of, of things that you should know. Traditionally, you should trust your gut feeling. If you don't know, ask. Reach out to your IT team. Reach out to uh, your manager. Find out if that was a, a real you know, email, if it was a fish test or something of that nature. Because if you're looking at you know, 86% start with an employee, 90% uh, are starting with human error. But the number that really stands out to me other than those two is the bottom. You know, $3.86 million is the average cost of a data breach. Now, I'd imagine that when you're looking at a smaller company, that's fine. But when you're looking at a major corporation, I think, uh, Thrill, you were talking about Target. Mm -hmm. These are massive numbers. And those numbers will only go up, especially when a company is, is you know, massive, if it's a corporation, especially if they've been around for a long time and they don't have the proper security in place and they're not really emphasizing training. Next slide. Uh, this one is, is very important. Uh, one of the things that Mimecast realized is the fact that a lot of training modules out there that people can easily go ahead and purchase are just not doing it. They're looked at more of a, a pain to do by the end user. Uh, 1.5 million is spent on security awareness training. That number is not an exaggeration. The emphasis on getting actual training going on inside the company, that is huge. You can't just have security, you gotta have the training as well, the human firewall. Uh, but 64% of people don't wanna do it. They think it's a pain in the butt. They think that this is not fun, it's boring. What are, what are you teaching me? I, I know how to use the computer. I've been on the interwebs for a long time. Uh, I know what to look out for. I'm not learning anything, I don't wanna do it. You know, for, ex for the example, this graphic here, go with what you know, use the same password for everything. Do not do that. That is a huge red flag, because once they gain access to one, particular account, they'll gain access to all the accounts. And as we already looked at earlier on that live hack, we're already looking at the keystrokes anyways. We know as you're typing before you even hit the submit button. Next slide. Yeah, hopefully that guy with the robe isn't working with anyone on this webinar. <laughs> uh, when your employees do not like the actual training they're getting, and you'd probably be surprised uh, you know what I mean, to find out how many of them really don't like it. I know we just looked at the number, uh, but in this case, they're not going to pay attention. They don't care about it. How do I get through it as fast as possible? Next, 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 whatever it may be. Uh, they're not learning. They're not getting anything out of it. Uh, again, they see it more as a waste of time in their day. And now, eventually what it leads to when you combine those, they don't care about security whatsoever. They just want to get in, do the nine to five, punch in, punch out, get back to the house and not even think twice about it. So the big question here is, how do we change that? How do you engage them? Next slide. That comes with Mimecast awareness training. We call it Mimecast AT. We'll actually be using real live training modules that Mimecast has created 
and we're actually using videos. We found that by using this type of approach, we're getting a lot more participation. We're developing actual questions that develops a competitive mindset across your employee user base, and we're also measuring them against each other. Uh, really what it comes down to is this. When people feel that they did a good job, when they're actually enjoying what they're doing, when they're maybe even getting a laugh out of it because they know that's blatantly something that they should know and, you know, hey, I know how to do that now, you're getting the participation. They're actually learning and their attitude about security is a lot more positive and reinforced than maybe the traditionalized awareness training modules that may be out there from other vendors. Next slide. So that would actually conclude the five uh, cybersecurity best practices. Uh, I do have a slide here just to kind of give you guys kind of a behind the scenes look at who Arctic Wolf is. Um, and essentially we're, we're the market leader in security operations. So the slide here is just highlighting what our platform looks like on the back end. Now, if we start at the bottom, right, Arctic Wolf, we collect as much log sources um, and logs from different sources as possible. So we're what we call vendor neutral, right? So if any of the security solutions you guys are currently using, we can probably ingest that data. That would kind of move on up here. So that would be uh, ingested into that Arctic Wolf platform. From there, we're gonna enrich that data. So we, we are uh, subscribed to different threat intelligence feeds, um, you know, virus total, ET Pro, uh, FSI stack, and those type of things to, to enrich the data that we're collecting. Then we're going to analyze with multiple different engines, and customize alerting per customer. So we're gonna fine tune and make sure, you know, whether we understand what's low, medium, high severity for uh, the customer and what they're, and what really matters to their business. Um, then we add that human element to that detection of uh, really prioritizing those threats. So yeah, we have the technology and the product, but now you need that human element on top of that to really determine, you know, with my intelligence and then maybe group intelligence with, within our peers and, and our, our SOC team, you know, is this a high severity alert for this customer? Um, our concierge security team would deliver that service, whether it's uh, with managed detection and response, managed risk, which includes the vulnerability assessments, or managed cloud, which is really extending those two services to the cloud um, uh, platforms. So talk about a little bit of the Mimecast Cyber Resilience Platform. Uh, the big play for us is everything's under one roof, right? We want to make sure that you have a one-stop shop to take care of really anything that would be considered, you know, email, anything that's considered web, making sure that your awareness training is all taken care of, and even making sure that your brand is not being exploited out there. Uh, the nice part is we share threat intelligence uh, across all these different platforms. Everything is holistic and, and works with each other which makes it a, a very unique landscape, if you will, when it comes to the knowledge and intelligence that we have to be able to stop these types of attacks and give you the protection that you need. Uh, and another thing to point out, just as Darrell was talking about earlier, being able to go ahead and get all that data maybe outside of Mimecast to utilize in your other layers of your security approach, like we were talking about. We have an open API ecosystem to make sure that regardless of whatever data that you need from us, you can get it, you can feed it directly into your systems so this way you can correlate it, uh, do some sort of a trend analysis, and if it came down to it, even have automation where you can have that particular logs and, and whatever they may be, and have changes made directly inside of the Mimecast OS platform. Next slide. Awesome. So I'll awesome. pass this over to Andy uh, for a quick summary, and then we'll announce the, uh, the winner. Great, so thanks guys, I really do appreciate you uh, taking the time today and thanks everyone for joining us right so to summarize right leverage as many tools defense in depth we mentioned that a couple of times certainly these are two uh, solutions that go into that stack we talked about a number of different things or other solutions whether it's privileged access management or you know endpoint solutions it all goes together but certainly you know these threat vectors that we talked about today are, are, are very popular and uh, very easy to exploit, right? So making sure everybody's aware through that education process of, of what's possible, right? So give them a lot of what ifs and then, you know, backtrack that with them and show them, you know, if you adopt these best practices and policies, 
how is it going to benefit your organization? Certainly having, you know, 24 seven scanners in place uh, of some sort to watch your environment and make sure that you're getting the alerts uh, that you need when there is a, uh, you know, a breach potentially, or, you know, some sort of threat that you need to address is, is critical there. And, and certainly Arctic Wolf and, and Mimecast have some great tools that do that. Um, you got to do it all the time, right? Vigilance. It's, it's, it's easy to let your, your, you know, your guard down when nothing happens for a long time. And that's really just what the most sophisticated hackers are looking for. Um, get after it when it happens, right? Quickly triage what's important to you and, and make sure that, you know, you have the right response in place, whether it's an incident response program, also something available from Gotham, or it's something that, you know, you've got a, you know, a red team on, on call and you, you go after these things. So um, taking action, certainly don't just ignore it. Don't just wish it away. Uh, make sure that, you know, you're going after and doing the remediation that you need to, whether it's through an education, some sort of technical upgrade or a policy change or something along those lines. Uh, make sure you're taking action just to, you know, eliminate the threat for the long term. So lots of stuff to digest there. Um, I think we are ready to announce our winner for today. Shaylin, do you have that news? Wait, can we do winner. it? Go ahead, Shay. Hi, everyone. Yes, yeah, so our winner today is Joanne Bowles. Congratulations, Joanne. And I will be reaching out to you after this webinar with the details for it. Well done. Congratulations, Joanne. Thanks, Joe. Congratulations. And thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, we'll be reaching out with some follow-ups to you. Here's some uh, certainly calls to action here, right? If you want a trial, uh, Arctic Wolf certainly has that available um, as well as Mimecast, right? So taste it. If you guys want to talk about this a little bit, do you have something to add? Uh, no, yeah. I mean, if you guys are, are you know, in, interested in maybe doing like a, a dark web scan, uh, you know, seeing if maybe some of your employees might be using their corporate credentials for things like Facebook and they might have been compromised. Uh, you know, those are the things that we will be able to do for you guys. And then uh, with Mimecast, you guys can do a free 90 day trial um, with their web security. So uh, we'll take any, I guess, questions, questions. at this point. And um, you know, like, like Shannon said, if you guys have any questions, you can type them in the, uh, the chat box there. I don't think anything's coming in here, so I think we can probably wrap it up, guys. Awesome. All right, so uh, we do have just a couple slides here with some contact information and uh, some, some areas where you can reach Gotham, um, but that is about it. I mean, if you guys don't have any questions, uh, we'll, we'll stop here. We did ask, someone did ask if the slides can be made available. Absolutely, we'll follow up with you on that and send you this deck. Have a great day, everyone. Stay well. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys.